Hello and welcome to KMTV, your roundup of what's going on in Kent on Wednesday, May the 27th. Three men are being sentenced today after being found guilty of historic sex offences over a 30-year period at a Kent boys' school. 70-year-old Colwyn Baker from Edinburgh, David Hennessy, who's 73 and from Kings Lynn in Norfolk, and 61-year-old Nigel Putnam from Slough molested children at Swaylen School in Penshurst, a former residential school for boys with learning difficulties and behavioural problems. John Brown is from the NSPCC. This is a horrific case which shows individuals who have grossly abused their trust over, over a long period of time in, in the most horrific way against very vulnerable children and young people. No matter how long ago the abuse was perpetrated, all abusers should be aware and should remember that the chances of them being caught and brought to justice at some point are increasing all the time as we begin to take the challenge of child sexual abuse in the, in the UK uh, more seriously. A special ceremony tonight will mark the 25th anniversary of the Kent Air Ambulance at Canterbury Cathedral. Graham Stothard went to their headquarters in Marden to find out about the organisation. The first flight of a Kent Air Ambulance was Christmas 1989, when that first patient received hospital treatment in under seven minutes. The potential of using a helicopter to respond to specific emergencies was clear. Since then, the operation has come a long way, now provides treatment at a scene that emergency responders could before only dream of. Going right back to uh, 2005, uh, we started flying with doctors on board the helicopter and that's probably made the biggest difference because the skills of the doctor and paramedic team, um, taking those skills directly to a, a patient who is seriously ill and injured has made a massive difference. We effectively take A&E to the patient these days. In 2007, it expanded to cover Surrey and Sussex too and took on another helicopter. Now they can fly 24 hours a day and can provide blood transfusions or perform surgery on scene. For those who work on the team, it's incredibly rewarding and often very memorable. Um, I treated a patient uh, one day whose uh, younger relative we'd treated only a year before on the same day, um, and that sticks with me because he was very seriously injured. He had a mountain bike accident um, and we could see that he was bleeding significantly. So we stabilised him and flew him to one of the major trauma centres in London. But if it hadn't been for this system and this service and the combination of having a senior doctor and a paramedic together, that um, he probably wouldn't have survived that. But the 25 years of Kent's air ambulance history hasn't been without its fair share of tragedy. In 1998, one of their helicopters crashed here on Bluebell Hill. It killed all three crew members on board. That's what this stone here is in memory of. But the service tonight isn't to remember that tragedy. That is something the charity will never forget. But instead, it serves to thank everyone who supported them over the last quarter century, helping thousands of people and saving many lives. This is Graham Stoffard, KMTV in Marden. A young Kent mum who was diagnosed with cervical cancer after her first smear test has started a campaign to have the age of screening lowered. 25-year-old Emma Esler Green now faces having a hysterectomy to be clear of the disease. At the moment, women aren't offered cervical screening until they're 25, but the mum of four from Chatham says it should be 18. Well, I started here, obviously, I was 25 years old, am um, 25 years old, and um, went for my first smear test and it's come out that I have cervical cancer. Um, I strongly believe that if I'd had my smear test a lot earlier, that it would have been caught or I wouldn't have even had it as it's one of the cancers that can be prevented. Um, so my campaign is to try and get the age lowered as low as I can. It was absolutely devastating. All I could think of was my children and that I was gonna leave them, so yeah. It was not a nice experience at all to go through at 25 years old. The thought of leaving them was absolutely heartbreaking and I wouldn't want any other person my age, younger or even above to go through it. It's horrible. In other news, an investigation is underway after a woman's body was discovered in a canal in Sheerness. Police and forensic officers were called to Halfway Road near the entrance to the High Street at around 9.30 yesterday morning. There are currently no further details surrounding the deaths. 
Police have released CCTV images of a man they're looking for after a shopkeeper was repeatedly punched in the face and head during a robbery in Maidstone. Around £200 was taken from the Mediterranean store on Loose Road after a man jumped over the counter earlier this month. And a cocktail of drugs has been blamed for the death of a Ramsgate man at an all-night rave in London. An inquest was told 21-year-old Rhys Welsh was believed to have taken up to 20 pink pills at the party in August last year. And finally, today marks 100 years since one of the county's biggest naval disasters. Almost 350 people died when HMS Princess Irene exploded whilst moored in Sheerness in 1915. Jem Collins has been to the Isle of Sheppey to hear how the tragedy is being remembered. It was known as the camera shy boat, with just one photo ever taken. It was also to become one of Kent's biggest naval tragedies. The Princess Irene was moored just three miles off the coast when it exploded, killing 273 members of crew and 76 dockyard workers, with the explosion to be heard across Kent. Now, 100 years on from the disaster, the people of Sheerness are determined to remember those who lost their lives. The, the impact on the community was, um, in one road alone, there was eight casualties. And uh, when you think of Sheerness as a very tight terrace house, there was no communication. It must have been horrific to hear the explosion. The explosion was heard in Maidstone. Just show you how loud it was. A big column of smoke and uh, bits and pieces raining down on people. A little girl in, uh, in uh, grain was killed by a piece of metal. There was a severed head found in Hartlip and grain and bits and pieces of bodies all over the, all over the area. An exhibition featuring a scale model of the ship and wood from its mast started in April with a commemorative service planned for the centenary in May. The team at Blue Town Heritage Centre are still appealing to anyone, though, for any information to help build a bigger picture. This is Jem Collins and Sheerness for KMTV. There's more local news on KMFM and you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook, but that's it from KMTV.